I'm going to go over some TABE math level D practice questions. Two legs of a right triangle are six feet and eight feet long. What's the perimeter of the triangle? I'll show you two ways to solve this. One way is using the Pythagorean theorem. So that's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. A and B are the legs, C is the hypotenuse or the long side that's across from the right angle. Here we already have the legs because it says two legs. So I'm gonna plug in six for A and eight for B. Doesn't really matter which order you plug them in as long as you're putting them in for the legs and not the hypotenuse. So six squared is 36, eight squared is 64, and we're trying to figure out what the other side of the um, triangle is for this first part. So 36 plus 64 is 100. And that's C squared. So if you take the square root of both sides, C is going to equal 10. 10 is an answer, but that is not the answer we're looking for because it says, what is the perimeter of the triangle? So if we add six plus eight plus 10, six plus eight is 14, 14 plus 10 is 24. So 24 would be the perimeter all the way around. Um, another way that you could do this to find the missing side of the triangle is knowing that it's a common right triangle. So three, four, five is a common right triangle. Three times two is six. Four times two is eight. So five times two equals 10. And then you can see, um, like if you draw a triangle with sides six, eight, and 10, the perimeter would be like six steps this way, plus eight steps that way, plus 10 steps this way. So six plus eight is 14, plus 10 is 24. All right, a community athletic club holds an election to select a president and vice president. The nominations for selection include four females and three males. So there's seven total people. Um, so let's say this is for Prez and this is for VP. And what is the probability the female is elected president? So how many total people are there? Four plus three is seven and how many total Females are there, there's four total females. Um, and for the VP, it says a male is selected for vice president. So there's three total males out of the seven total people. Okay, so I'm starting this problem over. <laughs> um, sometimes I tend to overthink things. So, for president, oh, I lost my pen. Okay, so for president, That's only one out of seven people, whether it's male or female. And for vice president, that's also one out of seven people. So if you add those up, you get two out of seven.
I'm just kidding. That's not right. <laughs> you would think it would be that simple. Okay, so the real way to do it. Let me erase this. Okay, we know that there's seven total people. And the let me make sure. Okay, so out of the seven people, how many are women? There's four females for president. And if one of them is picked for president, that leaves six total people available for vice president. And out of those, it says a male is elected vice president. So there's three males. So three males out of the six people left. For president, it's four females out of the seven to start and for vice president it's three males out of the six that we have left so if we were to multiply and reduce this um two goes into four two times and two goes into six three times so that leaves us with two out of seven because the threes just cancel out all right an escalator moves at a rate of two feet per second. At what rate does the escalator move in miles per hour? So we're trying to get from feet per second to miles per hour. So if I start with two feet, feet on top, second on the bottom, right? And I want to get to miles, then I could put feet on the bottom and miles on the top. So how many feet per mile? Five, two, eight, zero for one mile. And the feet are gonna cancel out. So I'll be left with miles per second. So two goes into 5,280. Two thousand six hundred forty times. Okay, now that we have miles per second, I'm just rewriting this here. I want to get to hour, but I don't know off the top of my head second to hour, so I'm going to go second to minute. So if I put second on top to make sure it'll be able to cancel out and minute on the bottom, there are 60 seconds in one minute. So that leaves me with miles per minute. Okay, because the seconds are going to cancel out. So 2,640 divided by 60 is 30. So one mile in 30 minutes. Let me make sure 5280 divided by 22640 divided by 60. Oh, it's 44. Sorry, I put it into my calculator wrong. It's always good to double check your work. Okay. So from mile per minute, I can now say one mile per 44 minutes times minutes per hour. In one hour, there are 60 minutes. So this gives us miles per hour. So 60 divided by 44 is 1.36. So the answer would be D. All right, so 
each unit on this graph is a kilometer and what is the total length of the route? So from A to B, um, we're starting at two and if say you go to zero, that's two and from zero to five is five. So total A to B is seven kilometers. And then like starting at negative one to zero is one and then from zero to four is four, so this total is five. So seven plus five is 12, it's 12 kilometers. All right, here we have a scatter plot and if we look at it, it it's kind of like a line going in this direction. So we know that any line from left to right has a negative slope. So if I look at my answers, it's going to have a negative association. So I know it's not A and it's not D. Um, the only difference between B and C is one says with clustering and one says with no outliers. So an outlier is a dot that would be like way, way, way off of the general line. So if I were to plot like a dot like way up here, that would be an outlier or way over here, that would be an outlier. But there aren't any real outliers way far away from what the general line is. So the answer is C. There's no outliers. My, where's the arrow? Okay, for this one, it wants to know which graphs represent a function. And there's three graphs that apply. So there's gonna be three answers. And we're gonna use our vertical line test. Um, basically, there can't be any y, value, y values that are the same for one x. So if you look at A right here and right here, like right there, um, it's overlapping. Like there's two y values, so that is not a function. For b, there's no overlapping y values, so b is one of the answers. C and d are also answers because there's no overlapping y values. They pass the vertical line test. Um, for e, if I were to draw or drag my pencil across it, up and down, like right here and right here, there's two y values for where x equals four. Like this is a vertical line and it crosses the same y value twice, okay? So that's why it doesn't pass the vertical line test, it's not a function. Same thing for f, um, there's multiple y values for one x value, so that is not a function. All right, I think this is the last one for this section. Um, we have three expressions and we are looking to pick from the selection below to make them all equal to 10x plus 11. So if I look at expression A, I'm gonna put A here. Um, we can check first by looking at just the numbers. Three times four is 12 and 12 minus one is 11. So that's good. Um, but now we need to do something with the X values. So three times something X plus x equals 10x. We want it to equal 10x. So if I subtract 1x from both sides, I have three times something x equals 9x. So I know that this is gonna be 3x. Three times 3x is 9x. So 3x is 4a. All right, for expression B, um, 
um, if we look at the x values, we could start by saying 6x minus 2x is 4x. So that is not correct. Um, it's not 1. If I plug in 2, 2 times 6x minus 2x, 2 times 6x is 12x, minus 2x equals 10x. So this is going to be 2. Just to double check, um, I'm going to say 2 times 5 is 10 plus 1 equals 11. So that also works. So 2 is what you put in for expression B. And then we have two blanks for expression C. Um, I'm going to go with the x's first for this one. So let's say 7 times something x plus 3x equals, and we want it to equal 10x. So 7 plus 3 is 10, yes? So this is just going to be 1x in this first, um, in this first box. Okay, now for the number part of it, we have 7 times 2, which is 14, minus something equals 11. So 14 minus 3 equals 11. So 3 is going to go in that last box. And that is it for a review of some TAB Level D math questions. Um, hope this was helpful.